I want to go on a vacation where I don't have to worry about a thing and I'm free to try new things. I want to ride the wind, explore new horizons, and be free of any schedules. Wouldn't you like to come visit the Arctic Tundra? Or are you too worried you can't handle the extreme climate? Don't worry. When you hear about all it has to offer, you will want to come experience the thrills and will no longer mind the chills. In the tundra, one can witness many of the natural wonders the world has to offer. One such example are the polar lights. The reason the northern lights occur in the magnetic poles is because of collisions between gaseous particles in the mesosphere with charged particles released from the sun's rays. Other activities include hiking during the warmer summer months, bird watching, dog sledding, and even canoeing and exploring the many lakes that form during the summer. This biome is found in the Northern Hemisphere in Alaska, Greenland, Canada, the North Pole, and Siberia. The most hospitable conditions occur during the warmer summer months. The winter time does not yield the most forgiving conditions. In fact, during the winter, the tundra is extremely cold and dark, with average temperatures around negative 28 degrees Celsius, sometimes dipping as low as negative 50 degrees Celsius. Due to the position of the sun at those high latitudes, it receives very limited sunlight. Although the sun remains in the sky 24 hours a day during the summer, it stays close to the horizon and provides only low intensity solar energy because the sunlight hits the tundra at an oblique angle. This makes the solar energy spread over a large, a large surface area, but at a lower intensity. This lower intensity sunlight has a very high albedo. That is, because of the snow covered regions of the tundra, it reflects much more solar energy than other biomes. That in and of itself is another contributing factor to the brutally chilly conditions. The annual precipitation of the tundra is approximately 6 to 10 inches. However, average temperatures during the summers range between 3 to 12 degrees Celsius, which enables this biome to sustain life. It sustains a multitude of beautiful species that are a spectacle to come see. Fauna of the tundra include the arctic fox, the ermine, and the grizzly bear which are examples of animals that have evolved to their extreme environments by developing shorter limbs and body parts which gives them more compact frames and in turn reduces heat loss. Other beautiful animals include caribous, snowy owls, harlequin ducks, musk ox, rock ptarmigans, and polar bears. How do such amazing creatures survive these conditions you may ask? The fur and feathers provide animals with excellent insulation, keeping the heat trapped inside them. Fur also acts as camouflage, helping prey hide in the snow. During hibernation, these animals gorge themselves on food during the summer, developing a thick layer of body fat that nourishes them and insulates them from the cold during the winter. Living underground allows the animals to avoid harsh weather and cold winds. They learn to burrow, which is common in ermines and hair. Arctic hares have large feet that enable them to move quickly across snow and also have claws that help them dig through the snow for food. In the summer, there are many lakes that form in the tundras across the world. Due to the frigid conditions, the soil of the tundra is permanently frozen. This type of soil is known as permafrost. During the summer, when the snow melts, it forms bogs, streams, and lakes. Even though the warmer temperatures causes the permafrost to thaw, it still remains frozen and therefore is impenetrable by water. Thus, melted snow and ice accumulates and little lakes form. Provides a great opportunity to take your canoe to explore. Few plants are durable enough to grow in the icy cold permafrost of the Arctic tundra. And those that do are typically very small mosses and grasses that can survive the very cold temperatures. Some, like the arctic moss, grow small and very close together to protect themselves from the harsh winds and cold. Others produce a waxy substance on the leaves to help reduce the loss of water in an otherwise very dry ecosystem. Humans drill through the permafrost to extract oil, which releases uh, years of carbon buildup in the ice. This contributes to global warming, which can alter the climate and majorly change ecosystems all over the globe. More locally, drilling through the permafrost destroys the habitat for the animals, leaving them a smaller portion of their homeland to inhabit. 
By polluting more and more, the climate of the tundra will continue to dissolve until all the ice there has melted. This will raise global sea levels and coastlines, and islands everywhere will be underwater. Many of the large mammals in the tundra are only able to stay alive by hunting in a very specific manner. The arctic fox uses stealth to detect its prey and pounces on small rodents through the snow. The arctic tundra has traditionally been a carbon sink, which means that it has absorbed carbon that other parts of the globe has emitted, but recently the rapidly melting ice has caused some to label it a carbon source. The carbon trapped in the ice is being released at a greater rate than it is being trapped in the ice. Let's all work together to protect this biome. For more information about visiting the tundra, call our toll-free hotline 1-800-111-11111. Again, that's 1-800-111-11111. Hope to see you soon.